Hi, I'm James Robinson. This is my stock pick of the week. Uh, this week we continue our discussion of Warner Enterprises, symbol W-E-R-N. Today we're going to talk about debt and dividends. So the biggest single component uh, that concerns me about debt is interest expense. Interest expense can kill you during bad times and siphons off profits from the owners in the good times. So I look at these in two different ways. The first thing I like to, like to look at is long-term what's happening with interest expense. Ideally, you'd have none, you'd have no debt and have no interest expense. However, oftentimes you do. So if you look at this company, you'll see that from 2011, they've started to add on debt and the amount of interest they paid has tripled. So that's a worrisome statistic uh, until you look at it in terms of scope, in terms of scale. Uh, they've gone from paying you know less than a million dollars of interest to paying three million dollars of interest and that number has been flat for three years um, three million dollars of interest in a company of this size is pretty irrelevant to put it in perspective um, interest expense as a percentage of operating income which is a way to judge the interest expense relative to the profits of the company is virtually non-existent um, i like to see it at about 15 percent or less this company has you know never been approached four percent and so while you see interest rates going up, they've been st uh, interest expense going up, it's been steady for three years and it's been steady at what is an inconsequential level. So that's why you have to look at a lot of these numbers through multiple prisms to get a sense for what's really happening. So debt analysis, I like to look at the debt of a company through, through uh, two different ways. I like to look at total current liabilities and I like to look at long-term debt. Um, total current liabilities, the definition is, this is money that you owe someone that you have to pay them by the end of the year. Long-term debt is money that you owe them and you have longer than 12 months to pay it back. Current liabilities tend to increase, in fact, virtually always increase as your company grows. It costs money to make money, you take on obligations, whether that's rents or payroll or um, inventory, et cetera. And oftentimes you do that on terms and so you are gonna have current liabilities which tend to increase over time. Um, total long-term debt, however, in a great company would be zero in theory a company should be able to fund its operations by and through its operations without resorting to debt. And so one of the things that I look at is what's happening with the long-term debt. Um, you can see that this company in, up till 2011 had no debt. Um, it has to, took on some debt from 2011 to 2016, but for the last two years, it's managed to pay off its debt. That, the fact that it's paid down its debt from about 150 million to call it 50 million in the last two years is a really good sign. And we're gonna talk about that more when we talk about dividends. Uh, but long story short, uh, the, the debt for this company isn't a problem, either in terms of its interest payment or as in, uh, in, the, in the sense that it's indicative of a company that seems to be able to pay its operations, especially over the very, very long term. Another um, analysis that I like to do in terms of debt is I like to get a terms of what the debt is related to the profits of the company. And so I just use this shorthand of years income to pay off long term debt. So how many years of profits would it take to totally pay off all of our debt? And again, in this company, you can see that it's less than a year's income. So the debt is really relatively inconsequential relative to the business. I like to see it at about four years. I don't like to see it be any more than 10 years. And this company is very much in the safe zone at you know less than a year, uh, especially when you look at the fact that that number has come down dramatically in the next last couple of years. So what we're seeing here is a picture of a company where the interest payments aren't really significant, where the amount of debt relative to the income isn't significant, where the debt itself isn't very high, and in fact, the debt has been reducing. So these are all signs this company in terms of debt is extremely financially stable and, and, and doing a great job. So a picture tells a thousand words, but sometimes they're not the right thousand. Here you can see the interest coverage ratio. So interest coverage ratio is how many times does your profit cover the amount of interest that you owe? And you can see that this line has just dropped plummeted dramatically. And normally you would say, well, that's a real problem. But when you look at this in terms of scale, you realize maybe not so much. Um, at one point, they, they had 4,000 times the amount of profits they need to pay their interest. And that number is now plummeted to what today actually is, if you look at it, it's hard to tell, but it's 82 times. So they have 82 times the income that they need to pay their interest, which is fantastic, which easily puts in the top 10% top 10 of companies, um, of those companies which have debt. And so, again, it just the, the reason this looks so enormous is just because the scale is so off. If I had this thing with a scale of, you know, 15 times revenue and it would look off the chart. So again, this is this company is doing a great job and this chart is a little bit of a misnomer unless you really understand what you're looking at. So the other component of debt that we have to consider is debt as it relates to the money that we have on hand. Uh, so cash and market of securities is simply cash and cash-like equivalents that we have uh, in the bank. 
And you can see this company has had about the same amount of cash in the bank since going back to 2004, 2005. Uh, so they're very, very stable in the amount of cash they keep on hand. They don't keep more than they need. Uh, they don't, they're not hoarding cash. They, as you'll see in the next slide, they do have plenty of cash, however, to fund their operations. This means that they're doing a pretty good job of returning excess cash back to the shareholders, whether they're investing in the business, which this company's doing a lot of. In fact, I'm nervous about how much it's investing back in the business. They're paying dividends, not a lot, but some, and they're buying back shares. So the fact is they're using their excess cash for the benefit of the shareholders, and we'll talk a lot more about that in the, wage, in the wealth creation video that's upcoming. So hand in hand with the cash mar and marketable securities is uh, current assets and current liabilities. So we have a bunch of current liabilities. We've talked about that, things we have to pay in the next year, and we'd like to have enough money on hand. Current assets is money that can be either re is expected to be received or is in cash and can be liquidated within 12 months. So what we'd like to see is current assets to some degree outstripping and outpacing uh, current liabilities. And we see this, and you can see the buffer's been basically constant since, night, since 2000. Um, so this company is very conservative. They have plenty of money around to pay their operations. Uh, their interest is relatively low. So again, we, there's, when you look at the finance component of this business, it's, there's no red flags, and in fact, lots and lots of green ones. So now let's talk about dividends. The first thing I wanna say about Warner is this is not a company I would suggest that you should buy uh, if you're a dividend investor. The dividend is small. Uh, the dividend, for reasons we're gonna discuss, is not uh, as secure as it is in lots of other companies that I look at. So to me, the dividends is kind of a nice little bonus, uh, but I'd frankly wish the company would keep the money and, and find other uses for it than pay dividends. However, they do pay dividends, and so we're gonna talk about it and analyze it, and maybe it'll be a good object lesson for other companies that we look at as a compare and contrast. So um, here you can see a chart of dividends paid. You can see that since 1990, the dividends paid have, dramatic, have basically gone up. It's a little bit um, of a misnomer because it looks like in 2007, they started paying crazy dividends, and then in 2013, it went back to sort of the same pace. I haven't done the research to figure out what happened in that period of time. I suspect that what happened is that um, they stopped having growth in operations due to the recession. As a result of that, they didn't need to invest a bunch of money in capital improvements. And so rather than hoard money, they were giving it back to the shareholders. That would seem to fit what was happening here because in 2013, as their business started to take off again, uh, they've cut back on the dividends back to what is, let's call it a historical rate. So I would ignore those, whatever it is, five or six years between 2007 and 2013. Uh, the other thing to look at is the amount of dividend payout has actually done uh, a spectacular job when you compare it to dividends per share. So when you see dividends going up gradually and dividends per share going up dramatically, that obviously tells you that there are less shares out now than there were in the future, which tells me the company's using multiple avenues to return wealth to the shareholders. And again, we're going to talk about that in the wealth creation video. So looking at a chart of dividends um, doesn't tell us as much as I think we need to know. And in this company especially, you're gonna find that to be the case. So when looking at companies' dividends, we look at four factors, each independent of each other. Uh, we look at yield and growth, that's simply what they're paying and how that amount they're paying has gone up over time. We look at dividend safety in the context of earnings, so what percentage of the earnings is the company paying us. We look at dividend safety in the context of cash flow, and we look at dividend safety in the context of the company's current debt load. So we'll go through each of those, and hopefully it'll be illustrative of why I think Warner Enterprises is not a great play if you're simply a dividend investor. So here you can see uh, dividends per share is the blue line. You can see it's nicely going up into the right. And you can see the boxes indicate, the reddish brown boxes indicate the percentage of increase. Uh, so you can see that each year they've increased it. Um, and the yield right now is 0.97%, so very, very low. The S&P 500 average yield is 1.92, so it's half the yield of the S&P 500. So again, if we look at the S&P 500, I can find lots and lots of companies that pay a better yield if that's what you're looking for. Uh, however, the dividend growth has averaged uh, an increase of 15.5% in the last five years. So it's more than, I don't know, quadrupled, quintupled the rate of inflation over that period of time. So it'll catch up over time, uh, theoretically. But again, you're just not buying this company as a dividend play. Uh, it is nice that the dividend is growing though. So here you can see dividend safety in the context of earnings. And the way that we do that is we say, what are the company's profits and what percentage of those profits are they paying out as dividends? And the reason that's important is if a company is paying out 100% of its income in dividends and they then had a reduction in earnings one year through no fault of their own, through some weird market event, they would by necessity have to reduce the dividend. 
So we like to see companies that don't pay out 100%. We also like to see companies that pay out some significant percent. And in this company, you look at it and you say, well, the, the current pay ratio is 13.7%. That's very, very low. The average for the last five years is 14.3%. And to put that in context, the average, the average payout ratio for the S&P 500 is around 40%. So we're going to talk about why that is in the upcoming slide, but just, just looking at this, I'd say, well, why? It seems like this company should be able to pay a lot more dividends. And, and so why is that happening? Why isn't it paying more? And, and what else are they doing with their money? So this is where it starts to get in, where it starts to fall apart a little bit for me and where I start to get concerned about this company. Um, so I'm going to look at year 2018 and explain to you what's happening with this slide so you understand. So the first number is cash flow from operations. That's how much money the company had when they we're finished paying all the bills. It's just cash that was put into the bank at the end of the year. And you see they had $418 million. Capital expenditures is money they invested in their business. Um, in this case, probably new trucks, uh, new, um, new trailers, et cetera, et cetera. And you can see this year, they had $519 million in capital expenditures. So the capital expenditures outstripped the cash flow from operations. That's a bad sign. And when you look at that and you look back the last five years, that's happened each of the last five years. So you start saying, well, wait a minute, this company is spending more money on op capital expenditures than they're making from operations. The result between those two numbers is, is free cash flow. And you can see this company has negative free cash flow for each of the last five years. That would normally be for me a really, really big red flag. Um, and you can, but you see the dividends went up each year, the amount paid in dividends, and you can see that the cash flow to pay uh, dividends resulted in a negative number each year. So um, why am I willing to suggest you should buy a company with what, what is really a big problem? The trucking industry is an extremely capital intensive business. Uh, generally speaking, when a trucking company is spending a lot of money on capital expenditures, they're doing it to either A, increase the size of their fleet, or B, they're doing it to reduce or to replace an aging fleet. And this is probably a little bit of both. As I've shown you, the company's revenues have gone up nicely. The profits have gone up nicely. It costs money to make money. Okay, fine. Um, also, replacing uh, an old fleet generally generates profits because your maintenance costs go down and hopefully you get greater and greater efficiencies out of the newer trucks. And it's not just that you're spending less money on maintenance. You have less down days. You've got your trucks operating a higher percentage of the time. And so without being a trucking expert, I'm not sure I can analyze exactly what's happening here, but here's the part that really makes sense to me. This company has had negative cash flow for the last five years. During that period of time, in the last three years, they've paid down their debt, and they paid down their debt significantly. So they're paying dividends, they're paying down their debt, they've got a plenty of buffer to pay their continuing operations from their current liabilities to, to current assets. And so I look at this and I say, well, they must know what they're doing. I don't like this number, Normally it would be a red flag. If I was a dividend investor, I would disqualify this company because of this. But I, you gotta look at it in the context of everything else that's happening. And so when you look at all the other indications, you say that even though the negative, uh, the free cash flow is negative, we have to assume that thing's gonna self-correct over time. Um, and if it doesn't, then I'm wrong about the business, but I don't think that I am. This trend has gone on long enough. This is a stable enough company that I, I just gonna assume that they know what they're doing. I'm gonna give them a pass on this. So this next chart would be more meaningful if not for the last slide, which I showed you, which was the, um, the dividend safety in the context of cash flow. Because there's negative cash flow, this slide's never gonna look good. Uh, what I want you to keep in mind though is that the debt this company has is extremely small. And even if the interest rate went up to 50% or to 20%, um, it wouldn't have a, a very significant impact in the company's ability to pay its debts. They're really, really, really small relative to the company's earnings and relative to the um, operating income from cash flows. So again, this looks negative because the, the cash flow is so, uh, free cash flow is so low. And so I, again, I'm gonna ignore this slide, although I normally wouldn't. We're gonna continue to watch this. I look at this as a long-term play, um, but if I saw these numbers continue to deteriorate, or especially if I saw the amount of debt the company was taking on uh, start to dramatically increase, I would assume they weren't really able to fund their operations. And that would be, to me, an indication that we need to sell this company. But generally speaking for this company, we're not buying it as a dividend play, so I'm not too worried about what's happening with dividends. In fact, I wish they would stop paying dividends and use that money in their business. Um, the debt for the company is very, very low. Interest is insignificant. Uh, the company has plenty of cash on hand and that cash on hand has been very stable, even though they've had negative free cash flow for several years to fund operations. Um, 
and they've got plenty of money and current assets to pay their current liabilities. So long story short, all in, I think the dividends for this company are relevant and the finance for this company is, is very, very strong. So that's it for Warner Enterprises, dividends and, uh, and debt. Thank you very much. Please uh, remember to subscribe, uh, like, and also if you want to, you can follow me on um, Twitter. Um, my handle is at Robinson Stocks. Thank you very much.